Hey everyone, I'm Airwing Marine. Welcome back to the channel, my next Escape from Tarkov video. We're going to jump back into loot guides here. It's taken me a couple of days to get to the flea market, uh, which allows me to test things, not necessarily because I need that to show you guys loot guides, but it helps me check some things out a little bit easier. Now that I have that, I can focus a little bit more on doing loot guides for you guys. This one specifically isn't for the flea market. This is for before you have the flea market. How to make money now that it's at 20 and it's super difficult uh, to actually generate revenue, at least way more than it used to be. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. All right, so a couple of things real quick. Level 20 makes the game a lot harder, I get it. The level 20 flea market is a pretty big hurdle to overcome, but it's not all bad. There's a lot of good things that could come out of this and you just have to adjust how you're gonna play the game. So what it requires us all to do is just change the way we look at loot a little bit, at least until you're level 20 and find some ways to make money in the current situation so you can fund your raids buy the stuff you need from traders and get to level 20. And one big key I found of this is don't focus on what you're gonna do after level 20, what loot you're gonna sell, what stuff like, don't worry about that because right now where you're at is gonna be completely different than there. Focus now on getting to 20. Once you get to 20, there'll be plenty of time to make money. So that's what we're gonna dive into. It's how to make money before you have the flea market. Now, as you can see, I still have a train wreck of a inventory. I can't set this up the way i used to for you guys where i can show you items we'll put some stuff up on the screen make it a little bit easier but i'm gonna have to kind of read this from a script and not have the stuff right in front of you guys as you can see from here so the first one is going to be uh in things to keep to sell to vendors is purple items now this vodka is probably the cheapest price item i have here you see it's got a little purple background if you go look at some of the streamer items like uh there's Landmark streamer item, the rat poison, or smoke mask, shroud mask, Dr. Lupo. These are all purple backgrounds or the military circle board. Anything with a purple background is worth keeping and selling to the vendors. Uh, some, Most of them are tasks items in some way or another, uh, like the streamer items or the military circuit boards and you know stuff like that. But they're worth a bunch of money to the vendors. As far as barter items, the cheapest one you can get is the Serve 12 lighter, which is a little over 10K or Serve 12. The Serve L survival lighter, the little orange lighter that's got a purple background, that's worth like 10K to the vendors. So if you see something purple, grab it. If you got room in your secure container, it's probably worth more than anything that's not purple in there and roll with it that way. Because then when you, if you die with it, you can sell it to a vendor and make a little bit of money. Now, second on this list is Intel items. You know, anything like SSD drives, SAS drives, Intel's diaries, all of that stuff is worth uh, a bunch of money. Now you can sell them to Peacekeeper for dollars. That's gonna get you the most bang for your buck, but they also sell defense for good rubles. So keep that in mind. If you find those items, they're great to sell to vendors. And then pretty much anything you find in a safe, uh, you know, watches, gold skulls, the money, obviously, any of that stuff that comes out of safes is almost always worth keeping good stuff to sell to vendors. So safes are a great thing at this time to get into and loot uh, because it's gonna give you some of the best loot in the game. But filing cabinets are the same way. You're gonna find Intel items and SD drives and SAS drives and all that stuff in filing cabinets as well. And then lastly, anything with the word military in it. You know, military uh, CFDMs aren't purple. The, most of the military stuff's purple, but the CFDMs are not. COFDM, CF, the cough dams as I call them. They, uh, they're worth about 70 or 90K. I can't remember what they are exactly, but they're worth a bunch. They're white, but they're military in them. So anything with the word military is worth keeping. Now past this is gonna be some items that are worth more than 10K a slot that you might be overlooking uh, that are definitely worth keeping and selling to the vendors. Again, don't worry about some of the stuff for tasks or you know shit way down the road that you don't have to worry about. Just get to level 20 because there will be plenty of opportunity to make money there once you get there. So we're gonna start off with, with uh, rechargeable batteries. These things used to be used for ADARs. They were great because you could barter one for an ADAR and sell that ADAR for like 20K and make some money. They nuked that barter, it's not in there anymore, but they still sell for over 10K a slot. So they're fantastic to have. Silicone tubes, these sell for over 11K. So if you find those, they're great for selling to vendors. Uh, there's a lot of other uses for them, but they do have a pretty good cash value. Any of the phones, uh, the, you know, Summit's the streamer item phone, obviously, but the, the broken G Phone Xs or just the regular G Phones, those are worth a ton of money. And again, you'll find those in filing cabinets and stuff and jackets. They're great for selling. Poxaram, power banks, Nixors, T, all of these things are worth a bunch of money to the vendors. Um, one of the most favorite items for a long time, you'll see streamers, they see it and they pick it up instantly, is condensed milk because it sells for 15K to therapist or Jaeger all day long. It's a great little one slot item to loot and sell to the vendors. 
On top of this, you have uh, the TP200 TNT that sells for a bunch. LCDs, not the broken ones, the regular ones. Those are great to loot. They're two slots, but they sell for like 22K to the vendors. D fuels are obviously worth a bunch. Now you need them for your hideout. Now I would hang on to three of them because you need those for your heating level two. But after that, you can sell them to vendors and make a pretty good little bit of money with them. And then you get into some of the crazy things like thermite and optomoscopes and ratchets. Those are worth a bunch. But considering as they don't take up a lot of space, those are things I would hang on to because they have a ton of utility later, especially because you need them to upgrade your the ratchet, for example, you need that to upgrade your hideout. Now there's some other like kind of second tier items in here that are like eight to 10K that I like to keep as well. Uh, pretty much any computer parts. You got magnets, circuit boards, CPUs, things like that uh, that, are, uh, that are worth keeping. You can sell them to vendors. They do have use later, especially for some of the mechanic tasks. But if you're hurting for money, they're a great little one slot to sell. And you can just loot computers in a lot of different maps, you know, whether it's interchange or uh, customs or shoreline or reserve, get computers, get those parts out and sell them. And then you've got coffee, UEV lamps, and helix hoses. These things are on the bottom end, but they are worth more than most anything else out there. They give you that 8 to 10K a slot price and generate a little bit of money for you in each slot you get out of raid. Now, on top of this, one thing you can do that also helps is just pick up every rig and backpack you can stuff inside your backpack. It takes a little bit of Tetris and it makes unloading kind of a bear, but you can just sell those bags and those rigs to Ragman and it doesn't take up any more slots and it just generates that extra little bit of revenue. And over the long term, that'll work out for you. Lastly, we're going to talk about a couple of crafts that you can do to generate a little bit of extra money for you um, or save you a little bit of money. Uh, the first one's printer paper. If you have printer paper, it only sells for like 1500 or 1800. It's less than 2000 rubles to the vendors, but you can take that printer paper in a level one laboratory and turn it into two toilet papers. And those are worth 5,500 a piece. So that paper goes, you almost 10 X that paper. You make it from one to 2000 to 11 K rubles that you can sell right to the vendors. Next up is the LZSH helmet craft in the level one. All of these components to the vendors themselves are worth about 22K, less if you have a screwed up Kek Tech or Kek helmet, the Kek tactical helmet. If that one's broken, it's worth even less, but brand new, perfect one, zero durability lost. All of those parts are worth about 22K. If you craft those into an LZSH helmet, you're worth about 29K. So there's a little bit way to make a little bit more money with your Aramid and your duct tape and stuff. Instead of selling it, you craft that, you can sell it for a little bit more and again, help level up your Ragman some. Cords, this is probably one of the most powerful ones, power cords. Two power cords are worth about 16K, right? 8K a slot, they're two slot items, not that great. If you take those two power cords and turn those into wires, you can sell those wires to the vendors for about 37K. So it is a great, way to take 4k and turn it or four slots you know two power cords and turn it into almost 40k so keep that in mind plus you get the benefit of running your uh your hideout and leveling up your skills for your hideout which are super powerful later in the wipe and then lastly is kind of more of a money saving thing um for used uh pain pills and used hemostatic uh the calic b hemostats you know the, the three use ones you can use a one out of three and a one out of four pain pill um, and turn those into salewas and that will save you a little bit of money. You know, if you get those out of raid and you have them, instead of just using up that pain pill, you can turn that into a Slewa. Same thing with the, the the hemostats, especially if you scav in and you get one that's already used up, those are great to turn into Slewas. So that pretty much wraps it up. I'm gonna dive into crafting a little bit more. We're gonna do a video on, you know, how to make money once you get the flea market unlocked, but I'm gonna need some more time to do a little bit of research. The next video is probably gonna be barters uh, to help you get to level 20. And that's what we'll kind of focus on. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you in Tarkov. Well, that wraps up the video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button because it helps out the channel a bunch and subscribe for future content. We also have a discord links down in the description that you can come join. We're filling up with a bunch of chill people who just love to play Tarkov. If you're looking to support the channel in other ways, we've launched a Patreon with some benefits like access to a discord channel, a constantly updated spreadsheet for my hideout calculations and some other things if you want to go check it out over there. Lastly, thanks for your support on YouTube. It means the world to me and I greatly appreciate every one of you. So with that, we'll wrap it up up and we'll see you in Tarkov.